Thank you. you for having me, Oliver. Absolutely. Uh, let's get into it here because you're a big change guy. You wrote a book right. uh, uh, some years ago about change in uh, major like industrial themes, how people adapt to change. Many argue AI is like the biggest change in front of us right now. Is that how you describe it? I agree. Uh, back in 2022, I was screaming from the rooftop, AI is real, it's going to happen. That was a little bit before ChatGPT came along. <laughs> Uh, and we have done very, very well with our investments. Uh, what I'd like to caution people, having done this for a long, long time, it's not going to be up in a straight line. Mm -hmm. It's going to be treacherous, right? Uh, you know, we all talk about Amazon. Well, at one time it lost 95% of its value. Right, it took 10 years to it come back. It took a long time, and uh, so, you know, this thing has been going on since 2022 now. Yeah. Right? And it's the LLMs and. Right, LLMs. And uh, it's becoming a crowded trade at this point, so people need to be careful. However, mm. there are new developments in AI happening that uh, a lot of people are, you know, not familiar with. Uh, one of the things that I like to talk about is OpenAI, the original chat GPT, yep. has a new model called O1. Yes. So O1 is far superior to ChatGPT, okay? I'll share a very, very simple example, the simplest you can say. Yeah, please. And uh, yesterday, so we did a podcast on uh, OpenAI, O1, and uh, so it's a transcript. And I thought, well, we'll kind of see if the ChatGPT can uh, take this transcript and turn the tones and all that, because when you're talking, it's different than when the written word is. Sure. So now ChatGPT has a limitation that it can do only small sections. So I put in a simple prompt, ChatGPT, can you break it down in small segments and then join them at the end? Mm -hmm. He said, no, I can't do that, mm -hmm. right? I said, okay. Now I go to O1 and I say, I have a 30,000 word transcript, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> And he said, oh, I can't do that. I said, well, can you break it down in small segments and do whatever you want to do and then stitch it back in the end? He said, yes, I can do that. Mm. That's more of a logical process. Logical progression, right? They say it's like human reasoning. Is human that the, reasoning, you, yeah. That's how Sam Altman and uh, the team are describing exactly. it. Does that, does that resonate with you? No, I, I agree with you because as human beings, just even little things, right? Uh, from crossing the street, for example, we break it down in small parts and we have a chain of reasoning, chain of thoughts, quick ones, right? That's not what ChatGPT does, or mm. the present LLMs do. Mm -hmm. But this next generation, they're reasoning. They're breaking it down, and they're reasoning, mm. right? So that's the second stage of AI. And everybody's describing you know, all the different stages. So ultimately, where we're heading towards, maybe, what we call is uh, artificial general intelligence. Sure. Right? Where you and I will be obsolete. <laughs> Right. That's the, do whatever. Yes. Uh, uh, when it all comes together, right? Uh, it all comes together, yeah. right? Uh, the second stage, well, first kind of to back it out for a second, I had a guest this morning who said, uh, use the baseball analogy, where people say, you know, it's the first, second, third, ninth inning. And he said, oh, we're in batting practice. Now, is, I, I we're past batting practice, no, right? I, I, I disagree with that. So, so, you know, it's an investment show, right? So let's... Let's think about it a little differently. I think sure. I sent you some charts. Yeah. I don't know if we have The crowded uh, yeah, yeah, trade. Yeah. I like that. This is a good kind of way to think about, right. for a lot of people, how to know when the technical patterns start to kind of reflect this. Correct. As a believer of uh, you know technical trends, I, I, I like this because it kind of shows you when yeah. the verticality of a trend slows a bit. Correct, correct. The, the problem with the baseball analogy is if you say, and we won't argue we're in the batting practice or in the third inning or whatever. That kind of says, well, let me buy NVIDIA and hold on, it's going to go to the moon, right? And people get burned. So you have to understand. So this chart we're looking at, so, so I've been doing this for a long time and you know, finally I figured this out, I don't know, 20 years ago, and this has been really good. So there are five stages of everything, all these trends that come along. When you're long something. Long something. Yeah. The first stage is when very few people recognize change is coming, right? Mm -hmm. This was like 
chat GPT, even before that in 2022, this LLMs are coming. Sure. Okay. And that's where you generate the biggest alpha. Nobody knows, stocks are low, and I, I'm a big believer in risk control. We always use stops. Problem with stops is the hit. But if you can pick it up in the stage one, your stops almost never hit. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, stocks are already low. <laughs> right. So our, you think it's always going to be that way? Yeah, yeah. So our average of NVIDIA is $12.55. It's $120 now. Wow. Right? Okay. Then the second stage, the more recognition, more people start recognizing, starts going up. So mm -hmm. if you miss the first stage, that's fine. Jump on the second stage. Third stage, there's a wider recognition, gets to be known. You missed it, fine, get on. Now the fourth stage is when all the latecomers come in, right, and the hype, right? And the fifth stage is when it becomes a crowded trade. Mm. It kind of looks, it, that choppy part kind of <laughs> looks like what NVIDIA's been doing for basically exactly. well, four it's, or five months it's, now. It, it, it's, it's at that stage now, yeah. and people need to recognize that, mm. right? And so the question comes is, what happens after that, right? You get a crowded trade. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, I used to be a popular columnist on Market Watch. Yeah. And this is before splits, so people are confused. And we own Apple from four dollars fifty-eight cents, right? Okay. So four dollars fifty-eight cents is what two hundred some dollars, right? Because when iPhone came along, that was a big change. It made sense to have a core position, and then we trade around that position. Yeah. So this is before split, so numbers will be confusing. Apple was hitting about 700 something. And I wrote an article on Market Watch, time to take profits, time to hedge, mm. do something. Not, not totally sell out, sure. but Apple is going to fall. And, and you know the Apple fanboys. I even got death threats that day. You know, how come you can say Apple is going to fall? Right. Well, if you look at a chart, the next couple of months, Apple was got down to 350, lost half of its value, mm -hmm. right? Because do, do you worry that Nvidia could have some a Nvidia sort of? Could have some. I, mm -hmm. I can't tell you. You know, I mean, yeah. when we get closer, I think I would know. But today, I couldn't tell you where it is. But somewhere, we could lose. Is it worth a stab at a short, or is it more about not accumulating more at this juncture? I would not short Nvidia. I just yeah. would not. So, so what we have done right now, mm -hmm. we have hedged quite a bit of Nvidia. Okay. Okay. And if the if the, it falls, those hedges are going to be profitable, and we'll take profits on those hedges. So we'll take a core position, but then if it drops, we'll do what we call the trade around position. You know, we, where we're not holding on for a long time, we may have a plan of holding for a few months or whatever, right? Uh, there are plenty of other opportunities short. I mean, we short uh, pretty extensively. Sure. Uh, but I would not short NVIDIA. <laughs> uh, so I like, I like, I like the, where we are seeing that chop there. Before okay. we go, uh, where, okay. where are you accumulating? Give us uh, a little secret sauce into the next kind of uh, AI thought that you have. If, uh, you know, we are, this phase two of 01 going to be big from uh, Chad GPT, then, you know, is the trade from last time, the hyperscaler, still the trade, or is there something new? No, I think hyperscalers are still a trade. I would be very careful with Google. I will buy Microsoft and Meta on uh, any dips. Okay. Uh, what about some of these kind of forgotten chip makers like the uh, AMDs, Microns, AMATs, yeah, the stuff that's yeah. gotten hit pretty hard the last few months? Right, right. And I, I think AMD on dips should be bought. Micron earnings are coming tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so we own Micron for like $27. Okay. Uh, went up to 140, something has come down. Micron is a commodity. I think Micron dips, it should be bought again because mm. the demand for high bandwidth memory is going to keep on increasing. The profit margins are higher. Um, but I think the next biggest opportunities are going to be in the software space, mm. right? Because we talked about chat GPT, chat bots. The second one is what we call the reasoners, where you have some reason. And the third one is agents, where mm. they can do something. Yes. Right? So everybody's talking what they're going to come up with those. And what are they going to do with the software stocks? I think some software stocks are going to become immensely profitable. Others are going to, you know, if you have them, you can lose your short because they're not going to be able to compete mm. with the new whatever, whatever, whatever is coming. So I think that's the next thing I'm watching very, very keenly. I think that's the next fortune to be made in software stock. Longer short, right? Love that. Okay. Uh, because uh, so far they've been lagging. So I know there's a lot of uh, you That's know right. cloud cloud uh, bulls that have been kind of waiting for this That's to kick right. in for the AI trade. Hey, Nick, I'm great to meet you. Great conversation. Okay, nice to meet you.